to learn how to play jazz piano licks, but you're not sure which techniques you should learn and in which order, well in today's lesson I'm going to teach you 10 jazz licks starting from a beginner level and working our way up progressively to the advanced level, and I'm going to show you exactly which technique you should learn at each level. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now for each of these 10 jazz licks, we're gonna play them over the most important progression in jazz. So we're gonna briefly review this chord progression. I'm gonna teach you a left hand accompaniment for your level, and then we're gonna dive into each of these 10 licks. So the most important progression in jazz is called the two, five, one chord progression. And it is found in tons of tunes like Misty. Two, five, one or the way you look tonight. Two, five, one. Or Girl from Ipanema. Two, five, one. So if you practice licks on this progression, you're gonna have a much easier time soloing on almost any jazz tune. Now obviously it's pretty boring if you're playing your chords like this. So in the next step, I'm gonna teach you an accompaniment for your level. But before we do this, if you're enjoying the video, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. All right, if you're more on the beginner side, here is a really nice sounding left hand accompaniment that you can use as you're playing your licks. This uses a technique called chord shells, and these are partial chords that only use two or three notes. So for the first chord, D minor seven, you're gonna play it like this. The G seven, you're gonna play it like this. And then on the one chord, the C, you'll play it like this. And then you can switch to a C six like that. Now, if you're more on the intermediate side, I recommend that you use this left hand. This uses a very simple technique called the guide tone technique. And what I'm doing is I'm jumping from the root up to the third and the seventh of the chord, which we call the guide tones. You're gonna to do this on the G7. There are your guide tones. They're actually inverted from our original chord. And then on the C major seven chord, root up to your guide tones. And then on the C6, you're gonna do the same thing, but just move down to the A. Finally, if you're more on the advanced side, I recommend that you use this left hand accompaniment. For this left hand, I'm walking a bass line, and there are lots of different ways you can walk bass lines, but the way that I recommend you start with this is to start on the root and go root, fifth, root, fifth, and then on the G chord, root, fifth, root, fifth, and then on the C chord, root, fifth, root, fifth. Now this sounds pretty simple and you can spice it up with some ghost notes. Okay, and what I'm doing here is I'm just adding in a root in between the notes. So root, fifth, root, root, fifth, and then root, fifth, root, root, fifth. And then the same thing on the C chord. Root, fifth, root, root, fifth, root, fifth, root, root, fifth. The last thing I wanna mention about your left hand is that if you're playing with a band, you can use these beautiful chords called rootless voicing chords, which sound like this. Basically on the D chord, I'm playing these notes. This is called a D minor nine. I'm just adding a note to the chord to make it sound kind of spicy. Then on the G chord, I'm gonna play this beautiful chord called a G 13 chord. Okay, very simple to play. And then on the C chord, this is a C major nine. I'm just adding the D to the chord. And finally, we go to a C six nine by changing to the A in the middle. By the way, I wanted to mention that this lesson comes with four downloadable backing tracks at different tempos, so you can practice along with this. You can also download the lesson sheet music that you're seeing up here on the top left of your screen, and you can change the key of this entire lesson with the click of one button with our smart sheet music. So I'll put a link to all of that below. 
All right, congratulations. Now that you've learned the most important left hand chord progression and an accompaniment for your level, you are ready to learn each of these 10 jazz licks. We'll start with the most basic jazz lick that you can play if you are a beginner pianist and we're gonna work our way progressively up to level 10, which is the most advanced techniques. And what I'm gonna do is I'll play each lick at tempo, then I'm gonna break it down and explain exactly what I'm doing and then we'll play each one with the backing track. All right, first is lick number one, and if you are a beginner jazz pianist, you should be able to play this lick. Here's how it sounds. So for this lick, I am only using notes from the C major scale, okay? So it's very simple, and what I'm doing is I'm starting on the E, a little skip up there to the G. I'm walking down from the F, and then here's the magic. Okay, this is called a turn, and I'm starting on the B, I'm turning off this note like that. So skip up to C, and then we're walking down from B, and we're ending our lick. Okay, we're just skipping chord tones. So we have E, G. These belong to the chord, and then D, C. Now, it's very important that if you wanna use this technique when you're soloing, is that you try to land on chord tones on your primary beats. So notice on this line, one, two, three, we're on the F, which is part of our D minor seven chord. So we have one, two, three, four, one. On that G seven chord, we're hitting the third of the chord, right, that's a chord tone. And then on the C chord, we're landing on the E, which again is a chord tone. Now here it is with the backing track at a slow tempo so you can practice along with me. Here we go. By the way, if you wanna do a deep dive on this technique, you can check out our course, 251 Soloing with Chord Tone Targets. I'll put a link to that below. All right, lick number two is the next level of a lick. You wanna play this if you are a mid-beginner. So here's what it sounds like. So the key with this approach is to outline each of your chords. So on that first little lick, all I'm doing is I'm taking the first four notes of my D minor seven in first inversion and I'm arpeggiating them up the piano. So we have one, two, three, four, and then on the G chord, I'm gonna outline the notes of my G nine. So I'm adding the A to the chord and I'm gonna outline these notes. So here's what we have. One, two, three, four, G9. One, two, three, four. And then on the C chord, we're gonna play this. Okay, all I'm doing is outlining the notes of my C major seven chord. So we start on the G up to B. I'm gonna arpeggiate it down to the B, and now I'm gonna start on the G and arpeggiate it down, and now starting on the E and arpeggiating it down. And here it is with the slow backing track so you can practice along. Here we go. Now, if you wanna do a deep dive on this technique, you can check out our course, 251 Soloing with Outlining Chords. I'll put a link to that below. All right, if you wanna play a lick at a higher level, this is level three, which I call the late beginner level, and here's what it sounds like. So for this sound, you're gonna use a really cool technique called outlining diatonic seventh chords. And it's actually a very simple idea. If we take the notes of C major, this is our C major scale, and we separate them by third intervals, 
we have these chords called seventh chords. And you can do this on each note of the scale. So if you do it on the two chord, the D, we have a D minor seven, and then an E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, A minor seven, and B half diminished seven. And the cool thing is that you can use any of these diatonic seventh chords over any of your chords in your two, five, one chord progression. So let's look at this lick. Okay, I'm basically starting on the F diatonic chord. Remember, this is the four chord, one, two, three, four. I'm coming up this chord, one, two. I'm gonna use a little pivot note on the C, and now I'm gonna to switch to my D diatonic seventh chord. So I have one, two, three, four, one. I'm gonna come down, one, two, three, four. I'm kinda of starting on my C diatonic seventh chord there, but I just end on the G. And then on the C chord, I'm basically coming down all my diatonic seventh chords on this chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, let's play this one slowly with the backing track. Here we go. One. All right, if you want to play jazz licks at a higher level, this is level four, the early intermediate level, and here's how it sounds. Now this is a very exciting level because now you can start to incorporate some of these black notes into your solo, and it makes your solo sound a lot more interesting. So how am I using the black notes in my solo? Well, I'm using a technique called lower neighbors, and here's the concept. Let's say you have a chord like a D minor seven. Well, each one of the chord tones has a lower neighbor. The D has the C sharp, the F has the E, the A has the G sharp, and the C has the B. So when I'm building a line, I can use any one of these lower neighbors to get to my chord tones. So let's check out the lick and how I'm using this idea to create the lick. The lick starts like this. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm starting on that C sharp, that's the lower neighbor to the D, the chord tone. So we have up to the E, lower neighbor to the D, C, A, I'm just outlining the chord. Now a lower neighbor to the B, we're gonna go A sharp, B, now we're on the chord tone. I'm outlining the chord up to the nine, now G, and then I'm gonna go E, F, F sharp, that's the lower neighbor to the G, which is a chord tone for my C chord, and then I come down, E, D, C, B, this is just the notes from the C scale, and then I go G, G sharp, A, that's the lower neighbor to the A, which is a chord tone on the C6. And here it is with the backing track at a slow tempo so you can practice along. Here we go. All right, if you wanna play a lick at the higher level, this is lick number five. I call this a mid-intermediate level lick, and here's how it sounds. Now for this lick, we're gonna use the upper neighbor technique. And it's very similar to the last technique which you learned, but instead this time, we're gonna use the neighboring note that is just above each of the chord tones. So for our D minor seven, you can use the E flat as an upper neighbor, the G flat as an upper neighbor, the B flat, and then the D flat as an upper neighbor. So here's how we use this technique on our jazz lick. We start with this line. You see that? So we're starting on the E. Upper neighbor into the F, which is our chord tone. Upper neighbor into the D, which is a chord tone for the G chord. 
We're just using notes from the C scale. Outlining in the notes of G7, there's our upper neighbor getting us to our G on the C chord. We're gonna come down, upper neighbor to the G, and then we're gonna walk it down, and then on the C chord, we're just going E, C, A, A flat, that's the upper neighbor to the G, which is a chord tone. And here it is at a slow tempo. Here we go. By the way, if you want to do a deep dive on upper and lower neighbors, you can check out our course 251 Soloing with Upper and Lower Neighbors. I'll put a link to that below. All right, if you want to play a higher level jazz lick, this is lick number six at the late intermediate level, and here's what it sounds like. So for this lick, I'm using a really cool idea called an enclosure. And the basic idea is that when you have a chord, like a D minor seven chord, you can enclose each of the chord tones using the lower and upper neighbor. So now instead of going lower neighbor to the chord tone or upper neighbor to the chord tone, you can go, or you can go, and you can do this on each chord tone. You could do it on the F or or on the A, or on the C. So let's look at the lick. I'm enclosing the A using a lower neighbor, upper neighbor, coming down, and then on the G chord, you see that? So B, E, upper neighbor, lower neighbor, I'm enclosing the note or surrounding the note. And then on the C chord, doesn't that sound nice? So I'm coming up, A flat, G flat, right? That's the enclosure to G. And then here, same thing on the C, upper neighbor, lower neighbor into the C. And here it is with the slow tempo so you can practice along. Here we go. By the way, if you want to do a deep dive on this technique, you can check out our course 251 Soloing with Enclosures. I'll put a link to that below. All right, if you want to take your jazz licks to an even higher level, this is level seven. I call this the early advanced level, and here's what this sounds like. So for this approach, you're going to use multiple scales to solo over each of your chords. I call this the multi-scale approach, and there are three different scales that I use over each of these chords. On the first scale, the D minor 7, I'm going to use a scale called the minor bebop scale, and it basically uses all of these eight notes. Okay, it's a really nice skill that you can use. On the G7 chord, I'm going to use a scale called the Foley Altered Scale, and it uses these notes. It has a really cool jazzy sound. And finally, on my C chord, I'm going to use the Major Bebop Scale, which uses these notes. So let's check out how we're using these techniques on our jazz line. We start with this little descending line. Okay, I'm basically using all of the notes of my D minor bebop scale. And then on my G chord, I'm gonna do this really cool triplet line down the piano. I'm basically using all of the notes of my altered scale. And then on the C chord, I'm landing on my E, it's a chord tone. And then I've got this little line. Okay, I'm basically using the notes from my major bebop scale. and then I'm coming down to the G. All right, and here it is with the slowest backing track so you can practice along. Here we go. All 
All right, if you wanna take your lick to an even higher level, this is lick number eight. I call this the mid-advanced lick, and here's what it sounds like. So for this lick, I'm using a really cool technique called the upper structure technique. And the basic idea is that you can take a chord, like the D minor seven chord, and you can take two different triads and you can pair them together to create some really nice sounds. And recall earlier that I said on the D minor seven chord, you could use this scale called the D minor bebop scale. Well, guess what? There's a chord hidden in in this scale, the A major chord. So this is one of the upper structures. I can use an A major, and then I can also use an F major because this triad is also hidden in that scale. So you can go from A major to F major. Likewise, on the G7 chord, remember earlier I said that you could use that G altered scale? Well, guess what? There are different triads hidden in this scale. We actually have an E flat major triad, and we also have a D flat major triad. So you can pair these two triads together to create a really nice sound. So how do we use these ideas on the lick? Well, check out the first line. That's an A major chord, and then an F major chord, and then on the G7 chord, really cool sound. Basically, I'm playing an E flat major triad, using an upper neighbor to the D flat triad. I outline that one, and then I outline an E flat major triad, upper neighbor to the A flat, and I outline a D flat triad, and then I end my line on a G on the C chord. So here it is slowly if you want to practice with the backing track. Here we go. All right, if you wanna take your lick to an even higher level, this is level nine. I call this the late advanced lick, and here's what it sounds like. All right, for this lick, I'm using a very cool technique called quartal shapes. And here's the basic idea. If you take a chord like the D minor seven chord, remember I said that you can use any note from the C major scale on the D minor seven chord? Well, you can actually break up your C major scale into fourth intervals. And so what we wanna do is every time we play a chord like the D minor seven chord, we wanna play these fourth shapes as often as possible. Same with the G7 chord. Remember that I said you could use the G altered scale on this chord? Well, guess what? There are different fourth shapes hidden in this scale. For example, you have these fourths, these fourths, and these fourths, which all use notes from the G altered scale. So let's look at the lick and how we use these fourth intervals. I'm gonna start with this run of the piano. Basically, I'm using these fourth shapes, using the notes from the C major scale. And then on the G7 chord, Whoa, what's happening here? Well, I'm basically using notes from my G altered scale, but I'm using the fourth shapes. Okay, so it's a G7 chord. Then, those are my fourth shapes. I'm gonna do a cross over here, and then another fourth shape. You see that? And then to my C chord. I'm basically using fourth shapes. all fourth intervals and then I end on my G. All right, here it is with the slow backing track so you can practice along. Here we go. All 
right, now I know some of you watching are thinking, okay, Johnny, what is the level 10 lick? Like if I wanna play the highest level of jazz, and before I play this lick, I just wanna let you know, there are a lot of amazing, very high level sounding licks, but this is definitely one of my favorite techniques to use, and if you listen to a lot of modern jazz players, you'll hear techniques like this. So this is the level 10 or the final technique, and for this one, I'm just gonna call it beast mode. So here's what it sounds like. So for this lick, I'm using a very cool idea which I call pattern shifting. And it's actually a really simple concept. It just sounds really cool when you speed it up. And the basic idea is that you pick a shape at the piano. In this case, I picked a random chord shape, which is this starting one. It's basically a whole step on the top, a fourth interval in the middle, and then a whole step on the bottom. And once you pick your shape, then you shift it around the piano. In this case, I actually shift it down whole steps. So I bring it down to there, and then I bring it down to here, and then from here, I'm gonna use some connector notes to get to the next chord, and then I'll continue the pattern, okay? So let's look at the two, five, one chord progression and how I use it with these shapes. Starting with the first chord, D minor seven, here's my shape, and I'm gonna arpeggiate the notes. So I come down, next chord shape, okay, next chord shape, and then from here, I'm gonna connect the next shape. Basically, I would normally start my shape here, but I'm gonna use some chromatic notes, using a little enclosure to the B, and some lower neighbors to get to my B, and now I'm gonna continue my chord shapes down. So I have, And then from here, I'm going to do the same thing to the C chord. I'm going to go, right? I'm just using some lower neighbors to target the third, and then I continue my chord shape from here. And then I'm going to end my line by using some lower neighbors to get to my G. All right, let's go ahead and play this with the slow backing track so you can practice along with it. Here we go. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the lesson, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons for all playing levels where you'll learn your favorite songs, styles, and how to improvise at the piano. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.